Welcome CSE 103 class to our presentation on bits and bytes, the language of computers. You've been waiting for this, and I'm going to try to make this as exciting as possible. So let's get started. First of all, we're talking about digital data so far in our first unit. Bits and bytes we haven't talked about, but we've talked about pixels. Now, data on a computer, whether it's text, you know, you're writing papers, numbers, or pixels are stored digitally. You always hear that term digitally. That means it's stored as a digit. Notice the word digit is in there. That means it's stored as a number. That's why it's called digitally. Digital data is read in bits and bytes by computer processors. So that's how we're going to get to that. And bits and bytes make up the binary language, which we'll talk about. So again, digital data is made up of bits and bytes. That's how we're going to work with things like pixels, text, and stuff like that. Remember, you can't crumble up a piece of paper and send it through phone lines and send it through network lines. Same thing with photographs. We have to convert them to numbers, and that's what digital conversions do. If you think back of early fax machines and scanners, that's what they did. They turned basically a picture or paper into something digital so it could go through a phone line. And that's what we do today with computers. Now, the binary language you mentioned that this digital data is interpreted in the binary language. It means two. You know what binary means. Bi means two. So there's ones and zeros. It's an on and off state. If you think of electric, if anybody's ever worked on electric, it's either on or off. There's, there's no in between with electric. It's either on or off. So there's either electrical charge or there isn't an electrical charge. And this is used for giving computers instructions because computers aren't very smart. They only understand one and zero and on and off. You think computers are very smart. They're not very smart. They're very fast. They only understand the instructions that you give them. Now, we're also going to use binary for measuring the quantity and storing of data, which we'll see. Now, an early example of binary is something called Morse code. You probably heard about that in history class, basically where they just use dots and dashes. If you look at the SOS over there, there's only dots and dashes. There's three dots, there's three dashes, and we can convert that into letters so it was able to send messages. So they would ships would use them, military would use them. Eventually, it went into telegraph and telegram systems by converting these dots and dashes into the alphabet. But basically, when you think about it, it's a binary. It's only a dot and a dash. We just use more of them and in certain patterns, and that's really what we do with binary. Now, a binary digit, when we combine those two words together, we get bidget. I'm just kidding. We're not, we're not going to use bidget. We're going to use bit. Binary digit is bit. And the only binary digits we're going to use are ones and zeros. Now, eventually, we're going to have to count up higher than one and zero, and we're going to have something called bytes, where we take eight bits together and they form one byte, and we'll measure things a little bit better like that because we can't keep measuring things in bits. If you think if we used money and we always measured things in cents, that would be confusing. We go to dollars because a cent is such a small increment. Now, for you math people out here, here we're talking about bits and the combinations. Now, this makes sense. We actually talked about a bitmap image when we were talking about bitmap graphics and pixels. A one-bit image only gives you two combinations, black and white or one and zero. And then on the other end, we have 8-bit, which was actually a grayscale, which gives you 256 options. It actually goes from 0 to 255, but it adds up to 256 combinations. And that keeps going. If you remember 24-bit, that gave us 16.7 million combinations. That was 24-bit color. So that's where this comes from. This is the math. We're actually going to use the one in the middle for an exercise. We're going to use 4-bit graphics, 2 to the 4th power, and we're going to create some shades of gray going from 0 to 15. Remember, that's 16 total. And we're going to make 4-bit graphics. So we'll do a little exercise going over that a little bit. Now, again, 8 bits equal 1 byte. Now, you've heard bytes. You've heard of megabytes and kilobytes. If you look at the bullet list, you've heard of a kilobyte. That's a 1,000 bytes. Now, that's not a lot anymore. You might have documents in Word measured in kilobytes. And megabytes might start getting into things that involve photographs and stuff like that, even bigger than that. And then gigabytes. You have hard drives that are measured in gigabytes. So they're all bytes. It's a billion bytes is a gigabyte, a million bytes is a megabyte, thousands is a kilobyte. But it all starts with 8 bits becoming 1 byte. Now, if you type the letter on a computer, you went into Word and you typed the letter K and you saved it as a text file, the size of that file would basically be 1 byte. That's what it converts to. It's 8 bit. It would be 1 byte. We can translate these to numbers so we can understand them, so we know how big our hard drive is. We're not going to look at a hard drive and say, oh, it's 0011111, things like that. We can't read in ones and zeros. We don't do that. Computers do, but we don't. So we're going to translate them to numbers, so we have to learn the binary system a little bit.
It's a base two system, which again means it's just two digits that they use. We use 10 digits in our system, starting with zero and ending up with nine. And then in all our combinations, we can make as many numbers as we want. Now binary can make as many combinations as they want by using ones and zeros. They just measure it a little bit differently. And we'll go over that because this is a little confusing in the beginning. But anyway, let's talk about our number system. We basically have our ones place, our tens place, our hundreds place, our thousands place, and then it goes up from there in bigger numbers. But when you look at a number like this, this would be 1,011. You'd have one 1,000, zero 100s, 110, and one one. You're familiar with that from math, so that comes out to 1,000, 1,011. And that's how we read the base 10 system. Because we could use digits zero through nine, we could have numbers that look like this. We could, each place can have a zero to a nine. So if we had a nine here, that would be 9,400s, seven tens, one zero, that would be 9,470. Now that makes sense. Now we can't have a 10 here because then it would move over to the next place. And even if we had a zero here in our base 10 language, we don't specify the zero. We would start with the hundreds. If there's no thousands, we wouldn't say zero thousands. We would just say 470. Four hundreds, seven tens, and no zeros, 470. So that's our base 10. And I'm just showing that just to contrast it with binary. Now binary is a little bit different. It'll start with ones and then it'll have twos and it'll have fours, and it'll have eights, and it'll keep doubling. So you can guess what's next, 16s, 32, 64. That's why you'll see numbers like that in computers all the time in terms of hard drives and RAM and things like that. You'll see a lot of numbers that are divisible by eight and four and stuff like that, 512, 1024. It's never an even thousand or, or a million, even though we say that. One thing I wanna point out, this is a binary number, and this binary number is not 1011. It has one one, it has one two, it has zero fours and one eight. So that means there's eight, and then there's two, which is 10, and one, which is 11. That's the way you add these things up. You still add them up, but each digit is only zero and one, that's it. You can only have a zero and one, so you just have to keep going to the left for bigger numbers. So that's what that comes out to. You have one eight, you have zero fours, you have one two, and one one. And notice, because the ones are the place over here, if there's a one here, it's always gonna be an odd number, like 11. And if it's a zero, it's always going to be an even number over here. If you ever need to, if you ever get in a situation where you have to guess what an, if a binary number is odd or even, you could look at the end of the number to figure that out if you ever get on a game show or something. All right, here's another example. This number is 1111. And it's four bit because look, there's four places here. So it can only be four bits. Each one is a bit. So it's four bit. And each one can only be zero or one. Now, at the highest, a four bit would be one eight. 1, 4, 1, 2, and a 1. So that comes out to 12 and 3 is 15. So the highest number is 15. And you said, well, I thought there were 16 combinations. There are because 0 counts. So there's 0 all the way up to 15. That's where we get the 16 combinations. So the highest number 4-bit can be is 15, but the number of combinations is 16. That's why when we work on a 4-bit graphic, there'll be 16 color combinations of gray. They'll go from zero, which is black, and it'll go up to 15, which is white, and all the grays in between. But there'll only be 16 combinations. All right, so that's four bit. That makes sense. We're just counting over. One, one. We'll do a little practice here. So this number here, let's kind of see what this is. Let's try to guess what this is. We have no ones. We know it's an even number. And there's one, two, and there's one, eight. And the way you actually count these, it's probably easier to count from the left side. To come in here and say we have eight, and then we have two. So this number is 10. We have one eight and one two, so that number is 10 coming in from that side. And it's an even number, so that makes sense. So we have eight plus zero plus two plus zero comes up to 10. So that's our example for four bit. Now let's do another one here. What binary number would be nine? So if we had to come up with binary number nine, how would we do that? Well, the way you could do this is how many eights can go into nine? One, so we'd put a one here. And then we'd say, well, can we put a four into there? Can we add four to it? No, it would go over and it'd be 12. So that would be a zero here. And can we add two to that? No, because that would make it 10. Can we add one to that? Yes, so we could put one here. So that would be number nine. There would be one eight, zero fours, zero twos, and one one. That would be nine. That's how we'd come up with that value of nine. And again, it's odd, so we'd have a one at the end. And that's what it looks like when it's finished.
All right, let's talk about 8-bit. I won't, I'll reveal these things all at once here, but 8-bit, when we talk about grayscale, that's 256 different values that we can go up to, going from 0 to 255. So that not only goes from 1's place and 2's place, 4's and 8's, but it also has the 16's, 32's, 64's, and 128's. That could be a little harder to add up, but again, it's still just addition. We're not doing... We're not doing calculus here, so we can add these up. So if you look at this number here that we have, and I already have the answer, so I'm giving it away a little bit, but we have 128, and then we move over, and we have 132, and that puts it to 160. And as we keep going over, we add an 8 to that, and that makes it 168, and then we add a 2 to that, and that makes it 170. So this number is 170. And if you had to come up with that number, you'd do the same kind of thing. You'd go, okay, does 128 go into 170? Yes. And if you put 64 in there, does it go over 170? Yes, because 128 and 64 would be 192 or something like that. So you couldn't put a 64 in there. You could go over and put a 32 in it, and that would make it like 160. That's why we have a 1 there. So now we got 160, and if we throw a 16 in there, will we go over? Yes, we'll go to 176. How about if we throw an 8 in there, will we go over? No, it'll go to 168. And now what do we have left? We have a 2. So we could go over here to a 2, and that'll take us to 170. So that's kind of how it adds up. Now, you're not going to have to do this on a regular basis. That's not part of life where you have to add this up. But it is good to know how the binary language works, because you might see it from time to time. And it's also how our computers work. And we're also going to convert this to what's called a hexadecimal system at some point, which is another number system that we'll work with. All right, here's another one here. This is just something just to point out, that the highest 8-bit number is 255. Just like when you look at RGB, remember the RGB sliders, they went from 0 to 255, and all the highest numbers, if they were all on, would be 255, 255, 255. That's the highest 8-bit number. So in RGB, each channel would be 255. If it was grayscale and it was white, it would be 255. That's the highest number. If you add these all up, 128, and you make them all together, they don't go any higher than 255 and 8-bit. And then the lowest number, obviously, would be 0. And then that would give us 256 combinations. You know, everything in between. We're obviously not going to go through everything in between, but that's the way 8-bit works. So 8-bit does not go higher than the number 255. Now, there's a way to count this up. If you ever have a hard time counting it up, you could count up each side, because we know 4-bit isn't that hard. We know 4-bit, the highest number is 15 on each side. And we know it's 1, 1, 1, so that would be 15. So if you look at one side, you know the highest is 15, and you look at the other, what you can do is you can multiply this by 16. And there's a shortcut that you can actually kind of look at each one like 4-bit, except multiply this one by 16s when you're done. If you add this up, you get 15 ones, you get 15. And if you add this up, you get 15. But then if you multiply it by 16, you get 240. And then if you take 240 and add it to 15, you get 255. That's kind of a shortcut to do it. Again, not that this is something that you're going to be doing all the time, but it helps a little bit. And this helps us with hexadecimal, which actually uses a number system, which uses one digit is a 16, one digit is a 1. So this number here, let's take a look at this number. I think the order I have it in already solves it, but we'll look through here. So this number here, if we look at it in 4-bit at a time, this number is 8 and 1 is 9. So 9 times 16, whatever that is, 9 times 16 is 144. So on the one side, you'd have 144 because 9 times 16 is 144 because that's the number we have here. And then on the other side, we have a 4, a 2, and a 1. So we have 7. So when we add those up, so we basically have 144 and 7. And that should give us 151. It should come out to that. So that would be number 151. That's how that works. That's a, a shortcut. So if you're ever in a jam and you need a shortcut version of figuring out 8-bit binary, uh, just do 4-bit at a time. Little hint if you, ever, <laughs> if you ever get stuck in that situation. All right, let's look at one here. If you needed binary number 160, this should be a little bit easy when you think about it. Think about, we'll start with zeros here, but if you needed 160, think about how many 16s you would need. Well, we'd probably need 10, right? Or you could divide by 16. You could take whatever, you could take 160 and divide by 16 and you'll get 10. That's one way to do it. So if you think about it this way, if you take 160 divided by 16, you'll get 10. And the remainder is 0. Uh, these, these charts aren't really, <laughs> these 
PowerPoint slides aren't really helping. It's easier just to explain it, but you get the idea. 10 times 16, there's my 10 over here, which is 10 16s, which is 160. There's nothing left over, and that's how we get 160 as as our number. Now remember, the binary number is 10100000. The actual number that it translates to, the number that we're used to, the base 10 number is 160. So we're converting binary to base number. So it makes sense to us because that's the way we count. We're not computers. So anyway, I showed you the shortcut. And the shortcut is actually helpful because eventually we're going to do something called hexadecimal. And it works with 16s and 1s. So we're actually going to have a number of 16s and a number of 1s. And when the number goes over 9, when you have number 10 through 15, we use letters. If you've ever seen colors on web pages or RGB numbers and sliders, you might see letters in there. You might see like A, E, C, E, and then numbers in there, and you think, what's that? That's hexadecimal. Because it can't use numbers over 10, it uses letters because we only have digits 0 through 9, and it will only use two digits for each for each actual number, for each actual color. So it would use FF. That would be 15 16s and 15 ones, which would be 255. That's why our number 255, 255, 255 would actually be FF, FF, FF. Now I have another presentation on hexadecimal and RGB color. This is just about bits and binary. So hopefully this was just enough to get you confused. But just remember some of the things about binary that we're just using ones and zeros. That's all computers use is ones and zeros. That's all they understand. Computers can do things very fast. They can add things, multiply, do things very fast, but they can only add up to one and zero. Because it's a machine, they only understand electrical charges. But from there, we can keep increasing that exponentially. So that's what a computer understands, just like Morse code. Just think of the most basic language that people can understand. And it's usually kind of an on-off kind of thing. You know, lights flickering on and off, Morse code, things like that. And that's the way computers work. It's just they can do things very fast and exponentially very fast. So that's why they're very powerful. But anyway, that's binary, and that's the language of computers. Hopefully that helped out a little bit.